All right, so welcome back to uh, Prof E Plays. I'm Prof E, and we are picking up here with the, the story of Mies Kinson. Here we are in Act 1, Scene 8. All right, so Act 1, we are still kind of laying out what's happening here. We are on our way, right, traveling as we uh, know we have been, right, starting down in Hadarana, uh, where Mies left uh, the scout corps where he had been working, so he is, he's mustered out. Uh, he traveled up to Mentorok and got involved with a, a poisoning case, right, uh, and helping to solve that, and now is leaving Mentorok with his uh, friend, uh, remind me of her name, because I, Mara, that's right. So Mara and Mies are traveling now from Mentorok to Tenelgol, so I'm going to do a, a couple quick roles here right to first figure out like do we have any kind of random encounters as we leave uh Mentorok or as we arrive at Tentacle? So just roll it. If it's a six, then I'll say there is some kind of random encounter. It is not a six. So as we leave Mentorok, everything uh goes smoothly. And then as we arrive at Tentacle Goals, anything we encounter. Oh, there is some kind of encounter. This encounter isn't necessarily anything bad. It's just you know something we encounter something. All right, so let's flip to the space encounters section of the guide. A lot of flipping pages. That's one thing. I it may be useful potentially if if you're going to be using this document uh, to perhaps extract out right all of the okay the social encounters. I need starship encounters. There we go. Right, so we have some kind of starship encounter is going to happen here. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so I will roll on this table first. So it could be something hostile, or, or it could just be, you know, right, we could just come across space junk as we get to tentacles. So it says six, uh, six on this, says it's, oh, it is actually space junk. So let's go ahead and roll on the space junk table, or there's space junk encounter type. Right. Six. All right, so it's a lost or abandoned equipment or garbage. So so as we come in uh to the Tentacle system, uh we run across some you know, I say it's a, an abandoned ship or something like that, right? Which this may or may not have some meaning as we move further, but that is what we uh, can see. Right, from the ship that we are uh, passengers on. We're, we're not really piloting here at this point. Uh, we're just passengers. So as we arrive at Tantal Goal, so a little bit about this one. It's a relatively smaller planet, has fairly light gravity, about a quarter of what Earth would have. A very thin atmosphere requires a respirator uh, for you to be able to breathe. There's no water on this planet. It's purely a desert. It has a population of about 60,000 uh, people or so governed as a colony of Piathos, which we know is the, the much larger planet uh, that is just, I'm going to say north. Uh, I forget how this is laid out. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember whether it's, I guess, center word probably, right? Hub word or whatever they call that, right? So, so it is just north. <laughs> <laughs> the next text over. Right, so it, it is governed as a colony here of Piathos, which I think is good because Piathos is where we're trying to end up, so it should be pretty easy for us then transitioning from here uh, to there. Uh, here, it does have a relatively high law level. Say, for example, shotguns are not legal. and has a very high uh, tech level as well. Okay. Right, so that is, interestingly, when you look, um, the tech level here is actually a, a C as opposed to a B on Piathos. So it's actually, it's higher tech planet uh, than Piathos is. Right? And, and remember that this, uh, I guess you, you wouldn't know this necessarily, but the, the high tech means that this is stuff that we're producing here. So, so my guess is that here, even though it's a desert planet, there are probably some kind of minerals or something like that, which we can process into high technology. So there's, that would be a good reason that Piathos would want to have this planet as a colony uh, for it. Uh, it's, it's at the same time, not industrial, right? So it's, it's not a, it's actually a fairly 
poor uh, planet, so I'm guessing it has a very limited industrial base as far as that goes. So it's really basically just producing high-tech stuff that then gets sent off to Piathos. There is also a scout base available here, so if Mies wants to make contact with the scouts, that would be something that would be a possibility. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do our setup here right, for our scene. Right, so we know that we are still in Act 1 as a result. We are using the event scene chart. So I'm going to roll 2d6 first. And that'll tell us the type of scene that we're going to be dealing with here. Eight. And remember, we are kind of moving to the point where this is going to be used potentially for in, for inspiration, but possibly not. So this is a new NPC. Okay, so there's going to be some kind of new NPC introduced. And so that is something, again, that we can possibly... Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not always great with controls. <laughs> All right, uh, so now we also need uh, other pieces of the prompt. So the event is a new NPC. We need an action. We need a thing. We need a plot device, and we need opposition and location. Okay, so we have our motivations chart. I'm going to skip backward here, beginning here. We use that gives us the um, opposition chart. So we'll start with that. Uh, roll a d100. There we go. And we've got 33. Uh, 33 here would be a gang of uh, gang thugs, gang slash thugs, or your own employer. It's going to be the opposition here with whatever it is we're trying to accomplish on this planet. Now we are at this point just kind of passing through, so we're going to kind of have to see what happens on this planet. I, it might or will be that this is an extremely short session because there may not be much going on. Okay, complications, and that's what we need. We need a location, though. A uh, location is a D1000. Uh, okay, actually, I don't need that anymore. So the D1000 gives me a 515. I don't know that I've seen this one before. A monastery. Okay. So some kind of monastery, or something that would be inspired by a monastery. Uh, then the actions, I guess we do have to roll on that, that's another D-1000. Uh, 293. Disguise. Okay. Yeah, I really, honestly, I don't have much idea of what's going to be happening on this planet, so... I'm probably going to you know, pull from this pretty strongly. A 245 would be our thing dress. So disguise dress, okay. And then plot device. Here's plot devices and another D1000 roll. Yeah, I really, I think probably the plot devices is my, my favorite. Oh, this is 351. Of the covetous poet stuff. Okay, so 351 gives us good help is hard to find. The robotic servitors, android assistants, or helpful computer systems have gone into disrepair or perhaps are just suffering severe disloyalty. Well, <laughs> all right, so good help is hard to find. This is helping us um, move into. Uh, what is going to be our main story. So remember the main storyline that we created at the beginning was so we had these pirates that were caught that caught the attention of the, of the Galactic Navy, we decided to, this, to develop this AI system to deflect attention from them, uh, but it turned on them catastrophically and then has made uh, movements. Right. right, so what we know at this point is that uh, the AI system has moved on. Right, so the locations here are significant because pirates are based not on Kigethia. Okay, oh. All right, 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 so yeah. Kigethia was his home world, but he was here in Hadarana. Yeah, his, his home, where is Kigethia? Yeah, it was like way up here. Okay. Just trying to remind myself of what the overarching uh, storyline was. The AI system is integrated into the shipyard's computer systems, which is where pirates want to destroy. The shipyard is on a very populated planet of Piathos. 
the only A-level starport in this subsector. Okay, so so this is what we have figured out. Okay. 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 This. Okay. So. So we know some of what's happening in Piathos. Let's actually start bringing some of this in. So, so what we know is that this AI system is working its way right over to Piathos, integrating into the shipyard's computer systems, which is going to be a real problem because that's, as it says here, the only A-level starport in the subsector. So this could cause rather significant problems. And I think that we know that they are aware that there are issues starting to show up, uh, which is why the scouts have I guess, recruited Mies to come and help with this. Uh, it is outside of their uh, jurisdiction, really. And normally what the scouts are doing are exploring new planets. This is a very populated planet, very well developed. There's really no reason right, for the scouts to necessarily be involved with this, but Mies is no longer a scout. They think he might be helpful, and, I, and they also think it would be helpful for the scouts to have some kind of the information about what's going on with this. this. This is something that potentially they might find useful or something. Right, so pirates want to destroy the starport. Uh, they're resisting the reality of what they created and unleashed, but as they come to terms with it, they're resorting to deal-making and mind control drugs, perhaps, to try to gain allies to help them destroy uh, Piathos' starbase. So this is all stuff that's happening in the background, and one of them has gone to the Navy for help. Now, we're not anywhere near the Navy at this point. Okay, so this is background that I had not really done much with to this point. So, the question is, how we're going to try to get from where we are to now becoming more aware of what this situation is and what we need to do about it. So that is really kind of our goal as we're working through this particular set, set of scenes, we're trying to get to where we, that is Mies, and I guess Mara, she seems to be along for the ride here. Uh, they're aware of what the problem is, and aware of what they need to do about it. Being aware of what they need to do about it is really what's going to tip us from Act 1 into Act 2. At this point, we're aware that there's an AI system that has gone rogue, uh, and is creating issues, uh, but we're, we really don't know the exact issues, uh, that are being caused, uh, nor do we know, like, what we should do about it. Now, I have a question for the Oracle. Now, this is, I'm thinking about that space junk we ran across. So, D100. So, here's my question. That space junk we ran across, this uh, seemingly abandoned ship, did that have any connection right to the ai here right so i think that, i'm not going to say it's extremely likely but let's go very likely so if i roll 75 or less the answer is yes it's a 50 so that'd be a yes all right so in some way right, that abandoned ship is connected with this ai system okay that's that's good to know that's that's very good to know all right so Let's set the scene. Right, so we are coming in right to the starport. It is a class C starport, which is not particularly well developed. Uh, here at Tannel Goals, right, uh, I'm going to say this one. It's probably ground level, right? So I mean, it's, it's not a very hospitable atmosphere, but this is some place where like we could actually be on the ground, as opposed to a Mentorok, which was much less friendly to human beings being on the ground because of the density of the atmosphere. Right? So this is in fact exactly the opposite. It's a very thin atmosphere. So we can at least be there and walk around. Right? So we come into Tannel Goals, the, the ship that we are passengers on lands. Now, this is really kind of a strange planet. It's high-tech, non-industrial, and poor. So I'm thinking about what kinds of activities are going to be going on here. So we come out, it makes sense. I often imagine when I when I play Cepheus that many of the planets are dealing with, unless it happens to have like perfect atmosphere, has a dome system. So really here I'm imagining this planet being very Mars-like, really, right? Because it's a little bit smaller than Earth, right? So gravity is a little bit lighter. This is significantly smaller, right? 
very, very thin atmosphere, not particularly friendly to human beings, but at the same time, with a little bit of work, we can make it something breathable, right? So yeah, this is kind of what I'm imagining here, especially, so no water, right? So you know, the, the surface of Mars at this point, at least, is, is very dry, right? So I'm, I'm imagining a very Mars-like planet here. So, so that's what I've got. So Mars-like planet with, with domes that people are living in, right? So then we would come in, we would land, uh, I guess, just outside, right? One of the, the major domes that exists, and then we head in. So one of the inspirations is that there's a new NPC. I think it makes sense if we happen to run into this new NPC fairly quickly. So after all, so Mara and Mies are here. They're going to be here for about a week because that's kind of typically what is going to happen here. That's kind of standard operating procedure. So we are here for about a week and let's see who we meet. So first thing I want to do, uh, I have here somewhere, there it is, right? So uh, random encounters. I think we're going to do that. Let's go ahead, roll it as a d66. So we, we read the number separately, 3, 6. So 36 on the random encounter table. The peasants. Well, I guess that fits with poor. Right? So we come across somebody, apparently a, a peasant. Right? So relatively poor persons. This is not somebody who is involved with the, the colonization of this uh, planet. And then I want to know what is this person's name. So let's go ahead and roll. I think I, I, think I did it. Is it. Oh no, I don't need to roll, and I just need to look down. Okay, so I guess I'll just roll first. Are they a man? Oh seven. That'd be a yes. Okay, so I'll look for my next male name. Uh, they haven't used yet. I don't think we used Jerry Yarnaz yet. Do we use Jose Brazal? I don't think we did, but I'm not confident. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this person Jerry Yornaz. I guess it could be Yorne, but uh, now nah. nah, we're going to go with Yornaz. I like it. Okay, so Jerry Yornaz, the peasant. Right, what, what do we know about him in terms of his skill level of peasantry? Let's go ahead and roll that. Three, so very, very average as far as that goes. So that'd be three as a, because uh, we take whatever we roll minus, I think I do minus three, yes. Yes, that's right. Because yeah, the worst can be is a minus two. So three minus three is exactly a zero. Um, so he's fairly unremarkable. Uh, we run into him. What, what is his disposition like? I'm curious about that as well. So I'll roll here, it's a d50, so we roll the d100, divide by 2, round up. And we've got 47, which would come to a 24. Uh, so cynical or strange? I kind of like going with the strange route. So I'm trying to think, so what is going to be strange about him? So he has to stand out in some way. So the question is, is it like a mannerism or something like that? Uh, is it a mannerism, something behavioral that makes him stand out? Uh, 85, so that's, that's a no, I'm going 50-50 here. So it's not that, so it must be something physical. So there, there's something physical about uh, Jirunez that, that seems odd. Um, like is, I wonder, does he have like an obvious mutation or something like that? I'm imagining, say, that not something totally bizarre, but uh, but something that it would, it would at least make him noticeable. So I'm thinking something like, like being albino or something like that. So uh, albino, you would notice. It's not, it's not... Okay. 29. Yeah, so let's, let's say that. So let's say that uh, Jerry Nice is actually albino. Wait, so that is the part that kind of makes him more noticeable and memorable uh, to people. Okay, right, so, and actually, being further from the sun may actually be, be helpful here, given the, the lack of melatonin. Um, anyway, so so that that is what we have here. Now, the issue that we have, remember, we have this plot device, the good help is hard to find. So good help is hard to find, and here, it's a relatively high-tech planet, but they're poor. So, 
I feel like that means they probably wouldn't have a lot of like robot servants and workers and that kind of thing. Although they might actually be producing them. Uh, but I'm thinking just like their standard computer systems are having problems. And these this is something that definitely could be related to that AI. So I'm thinking that that is what is happening here. Okay, so I want to see what is his uh, kind of conversation level. Let's go ahead and roll those 2d6. Okay, it adds up to five. And I think we're not known, but I'm cynical. Or yeah, let's say he's cautious. He's, he's definitely a stranger. So we're going to go with, so he's, his attitude is somewhat unhelpful in the beginning of this conversation. Right. So we run into him. Where do we run into him? Yes. I mean, monastery would be a location, but that'd be kind of an odd thing for us to do immediately. So I'm thinking that we just, like, he's somewhere near the starport. It's probably a worker, right, going about his business, but there's clearly something wrong here. And he is upset about something, and, and we know, right, as the, we have the, the virtue of standing outside of this, knowing that there are problems with their computer system. So the question is, while he may not be helpful to our people, he might be willing to receive their help. That, that is a possibility. So, so we ask. So Mies goes up and says, you look like you have some kind of issue. Right? Uh, is there something we can do? Right? Is, is there in any way we can help you or you can at least tell us uh, what the problem is? Right? Now, I, I think that this... This, I don't see any reason that he would necessarily deny it. So I'm going to say it's extremely likely that he's willing to share this information. Yeah, 30, he's definitely willing to share this information. Good. So, right, so, the, oh yeah, so, and then, and then it, it explains that we have these problems, there's some kind of problem that is happening with the computer system. So here's a question for the oracle. Is this something that's um, life-threatening? I think this is unlikely. 14. Well, how unlikely was it? Extremely unlikely? I'd say extremely unlikely if they're doing <laughs> this into fix. Okay, so so no, it's not it's not really something like that. Right? So this is not like life support is failing or something like that. Instead, I suspect what it is instead, and this makes sense, uh, is that it's production. Something involved with the production process is not going the way that it should. The computers are not running the way they are really supposed to. And that's creating problems because, like, uh, poor Jerry is, he's not a computer guy. Like, he just kind of does the work around the plant. And that seems to be true for basically everyone here. This is a little colony. We're not really, oh, you know what? I just looked at my notes. Jerry Ernest, I've already used his name as a merchant. So this isn't Jerry. This is somebody else. <laughs> Oh, I need to keep better. Uh, Fenimora. There we go. Fenimora, number five. Okay. So Fenimora is telling us about uh, his problem. And he's not really a computer person. Solving this is not really uh, necessarily something that is in his... Um, wheelhouse, right, so to speak. Right, so, but if they need to solve this somehow, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking, like, this is something that could potentially create a delay, uh, because it would make sense if, if we're producing things that, that are high-tech here that are going to be then taken to Piethos, that that would be part of how our ship is going to be making money. So I think it's going to be very important for things to be back online for us to be able to move from here to there. So I think I think that's that's an important point. So the question is, does he then? Yeah, of course he's going to because I, you want to get your characters actually involved in things, right? So you know, I'm not sure what I can do about it, uh, but maybe right. 
you might be able to take a look. I don't know. You see, he's very flustered uh, by this. Right, so, so Feymora is just allowing for Mies with his... He doesn't have much knowledge of computers, but he does have some knowledge of electronics, at least enough that he's not going to be taking penalties uh, on trying to figure out what's happening with electronics. So I'm going to go ahead and enroll for him. It's intelligence, electronics. Right. So he's going to go uh, to this uh, kind of plant, that's uh, the production plant, and going to roll on this to see if he can figure out what is going on with this. And let's say that it take him, he analyzes the problem. Okay, so it's going to take him six hours to be spending on this. Eight or more, it gets there. Seven. But you know what? He's been spending like six hours here. I'm going to say yes. He spent enough time where we were one away. So yeah, I'm going to give it to him. So, so it takes about a day. Right? But he does manage to suss out kind of what some of the problems here might potentially be. And it appears, I'm going to say, that there are some of the, like, the circuits have been fried, right? Like, the, like some of the circuits have been overloaded, uh, and therefore are no longer functional. Now, here's the question. I, I wonder if Mies suspects that this may be sabotage of some, of some kind. That makes sense, right? And we don't have any kind of investigation or anything like that, I don't think. It's not, you know, that's not the kind of uh, ability that they have in this game, right? So I, I'm thinking that, yeah, he's thinking that there is, that this does feel like sabotage in some way, right? Right, so it reports back, says, well, here, here's the problem. It looks like it was sabotage, right? Uh, at the very least, we need to replace these systems. And I'm going to say that once he reports back at the end of the day about this, like this is something that, okay, they're a bit confused as to why these systems would have overloaded. Uh, but nonetheless, they have the, the parts, after all, that Bathos wants to keep their colony running right, so they can keep producing the, the technology that they need back home. And so they have the parts and all of that, and they have people that are able to replace them, just that they weren't quite able to figure out what was going on. And I suspect this might be because the AI is covering their tracks. Yeah. And so I'm going to say that that, that is what uh, is going on here on this planet. So now the question is, right, is there right, some other issue that's going to show up over the course of the week that might create some problems that Mises is going to have to solve? So, oh wait, no, I want to figure out, does he make the connection to the AI? So this might be an intelligence thing. I don't think this is going to be a hard connection to make. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of naturally give him, say, a plus two on this. So as long as he rolls a six or higher, he thinks there's something with the AI involved with this. After all, this would be sabotaging production process that then is used by Piathos, which we know for whatever reason this AI system wants to destroy. Oh, because the pirates programmed it to do that. All right, six or higher? It's a four. Nope. So Mies does not make the connection <laughs> at all uh, that, gee, this might have something to do with this AI system that I have been asked to come deal with. Nope, right there. Nope, clueless does not make the connection whatsoever. All right. Well, that's what it is. All right. So I'm wondering if there is right, some other kind of event that is going to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll on this. Uh, if not, we'll just call it there and say they finish out the week and head uh, to Piathos. All right. So let's go ahead and roll this 50-50. Is there something else that happens the next day? That requires their attention, 65, there is not, right? So they can take some time to just kind of relax. Uh, Mies, at this point, while he is not technically an employee of the scouts, the scouts are funding his trip, so they, they put him up in a reasonable accommodations. He can get enough food and all of that kind of stuff. And then off they go uh, toward 
next time we'll be looking at what is going to happen at Piathos. So it's kind of a, a short session, not a whole lot happening on this planet, uh, but we are making our way. Now, now note, uh, the way that things work uh, in the Cepheus universe, very much like it did in Traveler, is that travel is real slow. You would typically take it basically as a week for a jump from one sector to the next, and then you're going to spend a week there. So we're talking about like from the time they left. So like one, it took a while for messages to get there. We're talking one, two, three, four, five, six. It was like a month and a half ago that the message started coming this direction. Right now it's taking us a month and a half to get there. So by the time we get there, three months have passed since we were first aware of what was going on here and then sending out to try to get um, Mies to come. So a lot may have happened right in that time. So I'm really I'm really curious what we're going to find out about what is happening there on Piathos, but that is a matter for next time. Uh, for now, this is Profi signing off.